الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده على من لا نبي بعده ولا أمة بعد أمته ولا كتاب بعد كتابه ولا شريعة بعد شريعته أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم صدق الله العظيم My dear respected elders and brothers we stand today on the last Jumu'ah of this present Ramadan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our exertions even if it might not be worthy of presenting before Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, definitely it is not worthy of presenting before Almighty Allah. However, a statement of Hazrat Maulana Thanwi rahmatullahi comes to mind when he says, you continue striving to do what Allah has commanded. Perform your salat, perform your fasting, even if you do not get the desired type of impact, the desired effect, even if you do not feel that I have done justice, and how beautifully he puts it. He said, even if you read the best of Salat, today you felt that, you know, everything of my Salat was correct. He said, today you feel, you read two rakats, you said, everything of my Salat was right. I had the required concentration, determination, everything. He said, that also is not worthy and not equivalent to the greatness of Allah. So he said, you continue doing what you can, so that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can crown it with acceptance. Brothers, as we come towards the end of Ramadan, there is a mixed and dual type of feeling. However, keeping in mind what our ulama have made mention, that uh, in the initial stages of our life, we should have the greater fear of Almighty Allah. But towards the end of anything, we should always nice to end off with hope in Allah Ta'ala's mercy. Always good to end off in the hope of Allah's mercy. Now Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in terms of our amal and deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created dual type of capacities in each and every human being. Allah ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, فَعَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah has inspired and Allah ta'ala has put within human being the capacity to do good and to do evil. These two things are within human being, each and every human being. He has an aspect of doing good and an aspect of evil. That is why it is not surprising, and I'm saying this very deliberately, not surprising, that sometimes our thought fluctuates. Sometimes you have such a noble thought, that during the course of the day, the very same day after you had had a good thought, as you are lying in bed, you might just, a thought comes that might be completely evil. And our ulama have made mention, sometimes there is thousands of thoughts that come into our minds daily. And it is not possible that each and every thought of ours is ever, ever going to be only noble. So Allah Ta'ala has kept these dual aspects within humankind. And this is perhaps one of the, the beauties of human beings. The way Allama Iqbal has made mention in one of his poems, Darde dil ke waste peda kia insan ko, warna ta'at ke liye kuch kam na te kur rubia. Agar sirf ta'ati maksatta, agar sirf ta'ati maksatta, to Allah Ta'ala, malaika ke upar iktifa kar leta, insan ko peda nahi farmata. Allah would not have created human being if only the object, objective was only to do good. They showed is another dimension with regard to human being. And what is that dimension? It's a dimension that he has temptation to do evil. And then sometimes he resists that evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates his status. Allah elevates his status because he resisted evil. If that aspect of evil was not in him, if that aspect of evil was not in him, then what sawab and what reward there would have been in him resisting evil. Then sometimes a person does the aspect that are wrong. And then when he does wrong, he turns towards Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sin. That is also another dimension. Sahih Muslim has got a hadith. And we've got to keep this very, very un- understanding this hadith. It is not a license to do evil deeds. Lawlam tadnibu. If you do not commit guna and sin, Allah will create another makhluk. Allah will create another creation who will commit sin. And after committing sin, they will ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah will forgive them. 
ریزن یہ مطلب نہیں ہے کہ جو ہے نا گنا کرتے جاؤ اور اس سے جو ہے نا جنا گنا کر وہ جو ہے کرنے کی اجازت ہے مطلب یہ نہیں ہے بٹ اٹ مینس دے آر سرٹن ایٹریبیوٹ آف اللہ دیٹ نیڈس فلفلمنٹ دیٹ مینس مینیفیسٹیشن اگر اللہ غفار ہے اف اللہ از مرسی فل اللہ از فو گیونگ دین ان ہو از ہی گو شو فو گیونس ٹو اگر اللہ تعالیٰ معافی کرنے والا ہے تو کس کو معاف کرے گا وہ مولی کو تو معاف نہیں کرے گا نبی کو معاف نہیں کرے گا وہ تو گنے گاری کو معاف کرے گا دیٹ از اندر ناؤ وین اللہ تعالیٰ ہیز کیپ دیز ڈیول ایسپیکٹس آئی ویو میکنگ مینشن آف دیٹ اللہ ڈز ناٹ لائک آور ڈس اوبیڈینس ٹو اللہ ولا یرد عباد کفر اللہ ڈز ناٹ ہیپی وتھ یو کفر اینڈ ڈز بلیو دے فار دا قرآن سیز ان سورہ حجرات تحت جبلی That a mu'min regards guna in sin as burdensome as sitting under a mountain and waiting that perhaps any time a boulder is going to come to destroy him. Musliman kabhi guna ko halka nahi samajta. A mu'min never ever regards guna as something that is light. And brothers, we must make mention today, sometimes you and I, we justify some of the wrongs that we have done, which is not correct. And how do we justify it? I'll give you examples because sometimes we also talk about it. Yeah, but everyone is doing it. Everyone does it, doesn't make it correct. Sometimes we say, yeah, what must we do? We got caught up. That doesn't make it correct. So our guna in sin is no ordinary matter. Ulama have also made mention that there are certain things that make sin even worse. Ek to guna to hai hi pura. Lekin sometimes Allah Ta'ala says that make men certain things make guna even worse. Guna ko halka samajna. To regard guna as insignificant is makes the sin even worse. The other aspect is guna karke khush hona. The second thing is to, to become happy after doing a guna and sin. That makes the sin even more serious in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guna ke upar israr karna. To repeatedly make the same sin. And guna karke fakhar karna. And then to take pride in your sin. Four things. Ulama say make the sin even more worse than what it is. So we've got to stay away from it. And guna in sin is like a small, you know, a small aspect of fire. Now a small aspect of fire, one small aspect of fire can put up and burn, burn an entire house. You know, guna in sin is no ordinary matter. Now how do we deal with that which is so destructive, which can destroy us spiritually? Our ulama have made mention that it is Allah Ta'ala, we cannot remain with sin. There is an antidote that Allah Ta'ala has given with regard to sin. And that is istighfar and tawbah. Through the means of istighfar and tawbah, we can wipe away our sins. The way Nabi Karim S.A.W. had said, At-ta'ibu min adhambi kam Allah adhambala. A person who repents for the sins that he has committed, in the eyes of Allah, it is as if he has committed no sin. جو گناہ کے اوپر استفار اور توبہ کرتا ہے تو اللہ سبحانہ ہوا تعالیٰ کے نزدیک ایسا ہے کہ جیسے انہوں نے کچھ گناہ کیا ہی نہیں دس از انادر ایسپیکٹ دیٹ وی گوٹ کیپ ان مائنڈ سو یو نو ما تقی عثمانی گیو دس ویری بیوٹیفل ایگزامپل ہی سی ون ڈے ہی واز گوئنگ ان ٹو اے گارڈن اورچرڈ ہی ٹریول ویری وائڈلی اینڈ ایکسٹینسولی اینڈ ہی واز ان دیٹ اورچرڈ ہی واز جسٹ اباؤٹ ٹو پک ایٹ اے فلاور ہی واز جسٹ اباؤٹ ٹو پک ایٹ اے فلاور وین دا گائڈ آف دا اورچرڈ اینڈ دا گائڈ آف دا گارڈن سیڈ Don't touch that flower, flower, it is poisonous. Don't touch that flower, it is poisonous. If you touch it, it will harm you. He said, as he was just, as he pulled his hand away, the guy told him, but you know, Allah Ta'ala, normally the creation nature is such, wherever this flower is, there is another flower next to it, which is an antidote to the poison of this flower. So he said, well, normally in nature, wherever this flower you find, you will find another flower. That is an antidote for the poison of this flower. Mufti Taqisab says, this is an aspect with regard to our guna and sin. Sin is a poison. The antidote is toba and istighfar. The first thing Allah Ta'ala tells us with regard to istighfar, make excessive istighfar of guna of your sins that you have committed. 
اللہ تعالیٰ ہے اس کے مینی ادر بینیفٹس آف استغفار مل لزیم الاستغفار جعل اللہ لہو من کل ذیق مخرجہ اللہ تعالیٰ سیز ویور میکس استغفار a part and parcel of his routine in his daily life Allah together with having his sins forgiven Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up a door from every difficulty of his there's a very interesting incident that has been made mention that you know Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi is Imam Ahli Sunnah very very great scholar someone worthy of respect and reverence across all schools of thoughts so one day Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was a traveler and he came to a masjid And the person did not recognize Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. So he did not allow Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullah alayhi to sleep in the masjid. So Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullah alayhi in a very despondent state, not knowing where he is going to spend his knife, went outside the masjid, looking around what is going to happen. When the person next to the masjid saw Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, they didn't know it was Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He saw an old person and he said, what is your problem? He said, I don't have anywhere to sleep. They stopped me to sleep in the masjid. So he said, come, I will be your host, come sleep in my house. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullah alayhi noticed that this person was reciting istighfar constantly. He was reciting istighfar constantly. So towards the end when he was about to leave, he asked him, I noticed that you read istighfar constantly. Tell me the reason why you do so. He said of this aspect that Allah Ta'ala has promised a person who makes istighfar all types of, dif- removal from all types of difficulty. He said, whatever I wanted, whenever I read istighfar, Allah Ta'ala granted me that. He said, I got one more wish. I got one more wish. And I hope Allah Ta'ala, by me reciting this istighfar, Allah will grant me that wish also. So Imam Ahmed Iman said, what is that wish? So he said, I want to meet Imam Ahmed Ibn Hanbal. He said, I want to meet Ahmed Ibn Ahmed Ibn Hanbal. And I hope to the means of istighfar, Allah Ta'ala will make it possible. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullah alayhi had just spent the night in his house. So this is the aspect of istighfar. Together with, that is why it is said about Hassan, Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One day a person came to him and said, Oh Imam, oh Hassan, grandson of the Nabi of Allah, I have difficulty. I don't have any risk. So Imam Hassan told him that, go and read istighfar. After a while he told him, that someone came and told him, I, know I do not have children. I have difficulty in paying my, my, my debts. So go and read istighfar. Go and read istighfar. The student said, every time someone came with a difficulty, you said, read istighfar. He said, Allah Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرُسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا Go and make istighfar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins. Allah Ta'ala will grant you rain. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِ وَبَنِينَ Allah will help you with wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you with children. Istighfar is such a great aspect. Our and hadith comes, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that whenever namai amal there is, there is excessive istighfar, that person is most fortunate. So make this a reality, my dear respect to this. Then with regard to our having our sins forgiven, the cornerstone is nadamat. Nadamat, to have regret over the wrong that you have done. In Kanzul Ummal, there is a hadith that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said, When a person has regret for the wrong that he has done, when a person has regret for the wrong that he has done, then even before he even utters the words of istighfar, Allah Ta'ala forgives him. Huh? Allah Ta'ala forgives him. The way someone had said, Dolate mil gayi hai, Dolate mil gayi hai aho ki, Esi, tesi, mere guna ho ki. When a person cries with regard to his wrongs that he has done, then his guna gets wiped away from him. So istighfar, tawbah, then to rectify the wrong that we have done with regard to tawbah. If we have taken someone's wealth to return it, if we have not performed our salat to perform our salat. These are aspects that inshallah will have, that the destructive aspects of sin inshallah will leave us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us free from all types of sin. However inshallah we also have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are entitled to have that hope while we also fear Allah ta'ala's punishment. إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبِّهِمْ غَيْرُ مَعْمُونَ The adab of Allah is such that no one should regard himself secure from. But there's this aspect that Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Therefore, don't worry about the aspect of retribution. Worry about Allah's punishment is not the hallmark of a believer. إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبِّهِمْ غَيْرُ مَعْمُونَ The believer, Allah Ta'ala says, 
never regards himself secure from the punishment of Allah. But together with that, we are also, we also have hope in the mercy of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said about Hazrat Yahya ibn Mu'ad rahmatullah Ali, that Yahya ibn Mu'ad rahmatullah Ali used to make the following three duas. Oh Allah, you have said in the hadith of your beloved Habib, that there are hundred portions of your mercy, and only one portion you have distributed amongst the people of this world. Only one portion. And 99 portions you will leave in Jannah. Oh Allah, when you will exhibit the remainder of your mercy on the day of Qiyamah, do we have the right to aspire for your mercy on the day of Qiyamah? When 99 portions of your mercy would be in the year after. Oh Allah, if your reward is reserved for the obedient and your, and your mercy is, re- is reserved for the obedient, I would aspire for your reward even though I was not from the obedient. Why should I not aspire for your mercy when I am a sinner? I made mention of this previously. Asma'i rahmatullahi One day he saw a person rendering some very hard rendering ashar in the haram. And he went to go and see him. Who was rendering this ashar? He found it to be Zainul Abidin, the grandson of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu the son of Adar Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And amongst those 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 poets was one in kana juda kala yaruju dhu sifatin fama yajudu bil asina bil karmi oh allah if the sinners if the sinners cannot hope in your mercy then who are you going to shower your mercy upon on the day of kiamat and who should the sinners turn to with regard to your mercy and who do they turn to when they seek mercy of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah if you have created jannah for your friends and you have deprived the kuffar thereof and made them despondent of entering it. The angels are not in need of Jannah. Oh Allah, you are also independent of Jannah. Then for who can Jannah be made except for the believers? This was the dua of Hazrat Yahya ibn Mu'ad rahmatullah alayhi. Brothers, in this particular matter, we can also take great amount of consolation from the hadith of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which there is a, you know, amazingly this time when I went to Medina and Munawara, as you are walking towards the Rosa and Mubarak, as you are walking towards the Rosa Mubarak, on the left hand side, written in brass, is this most beautiful hadith, Shafa'ati li ahlil kabair min ummati. In Tirmidhi there is this hadith, that my intercession, Nabi Wasallam said, is for the people who have committed guna amongst my ummah. My intercession, li ahlil kabair min ummati, is for those people who have committed wrong amongst my ummah. That is my intercession would be on the day of Qiyamah. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Under the ayat, under the tafsir of this ayat, our ulama have said that when this ayat was revealed, Allah will grant you, O Prophet of Almighty Allah, that which pleases you. Allah will grant you that which pleases you. When Nabi Karim Wasallam, this ayat was revealed, Nabi Karim Wasallam lifted up his hands in dua and said, O oh Allah, if you have promised to please me, I would not be pleased until every ummati of mine is in Jannah. Our ulama have made mention and they have they've debated which is the ayat which has induces the greatest mercy. Two ayats come to mind. Two ayats the ulama say that you know one is قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ O oh, you who have done wrong. I always amazed at this ayat. Allah is not addressing the Nabi. Allah is not addressing the saints. Allah, my dear respected brothers, is addressing people who are gunagad like you and I. People who are sinners and people who have committed wrong like you and I. And Allah is saying so beautifully, O oh, my bondsmen, those who have done wrong to your soul by disobeying me. You didn't harm me. By you disobeying me, what did you harm me? Allah Ta'ala is such that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that... Um, Allah Ta'ala, Masiyah does not harm Allah Ta'ala. So, Ya ibadiya alladheena asrafu ala anfusim, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all types of sins provided you are sincere in repentance. And the second ayat which the ulama say induces the greatest amount of hope is wala sawfa yu atika rabbuka fatarda. Hazrat Muhammad Kamaru Zaman sahab, uh, he wrote a, a, a kitab a tarif dhunub when he compared these two verses his judgment was that this ayat wala sawfa yu atika rabbuka fatarda the allah ta'ala says i will give you a prophet of almighty allah that which pleases you he says this to me induces greater hope in the mercy of allah than any other ayat more than any other ayat in kanzul ummah there is a hadith 
The Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, there were two people of Bani Israel. One was someone who was a very devout person, making worship, making ibadat. And another one was, who was not so worship. He used to do his parais, sometimes he used to commit sin and used to do something that was wrong. And the person who was a devout person used to tell him that you are a sinner, you are doing this wrong, you are doing that wrong. He said, yes, I acknowledge that I'm dying, doing all this wrong, but I hope inshallah Allah Ta'ala will forgive me. And one day the devout person, out of a foot of rage said, you have committed sin, Allah will never forgive you. Allah will never forgive you. And when he said that, it comes in a hadith that Allah Ta'ala took an oath by His Majesty. Allah Ta'ala took an oath by His Majesty. He said, who is there who makes a judgment on my behalf that I will not forgive the person who has committed sin? Go, I have forgiven the person who has committed the sin and I will put in Jahannam the person who is proud with regard to his ibadat. I will put in as a Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, Faqih abu layth sabar kandi in tambihul ghafilin makes mention of this incident. That a person of Bani Israel made ibadat for 500 years. For 500 years he made ibadat. And on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will tell him, go because of my mercy, go into Jannat. Go into Jannat. And he will say, Wallah, my 500 years of ibadat, what happened to that? You are saying, because of my mercy, go to Jannat. What about my 500 years of ibadat? And Allah Ta'ala will say, then take your ibadat. Take your ibadat and weigh it with my bounties. And it will be found that one glass of water that Allah Ta'ala gives us was more weightier than 500 years of ibadat. And then when the scales was done, then Allah Ta'ala had said, you have lost out. Now Allah Ta'ala will tell him, tell the angels, take him towards Jahannam. As he is going into Jahannam, he will say, Oh Allah, grant me Jannat out of your mercy. Allah will call him back. And Allah will call him back and Allah will say, say that again. He will say, oh Allah, out of your mercy, grant me Jannah. Allah then will tell him, Oh my Banna, I created you. I was not compelled to create you. Is that my mercy or not? He said, yes. I gave you water to drink. Was that my mercy or not? What ibadat did you do for me to create you? What ibadat did you do for me to grant you a glass of water? Brothers, we need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there is a very interesting incident of Yahya ibn Aksam rahmatullahi with which I will conclude. Hazrat Yahya ibn Aksam rahmatullahi was a very old, old person. He was a scholar and he passed away. And it is said that Ahmad bin Suhail rahmatullahi saw him in a dream after Yahya ibn Aksam had passed away. And he said, Yahya, how did Allah treat you? So Yahya ibn Aksam rahmatullahi said, Allah called me and said, Ya Sheikh, fa'alta kada wa kada wa kada. Oh, old person, when you were in this world, you did this wrong. That day you did this wrong. That day you did this wrong. That day you did this wrong. Do you acknowledge what you have done? So Yahya ibn Aksam, he's telling this person who has seen a dream, Yahya ibn Aksam said, he said, yes, Allah, I acknowledge, but this is not what I have heard about you. This is not what I have heard about you. So Allah will t- tell him that, Yahya, what did you hear about me? Then he narrated the long chain of narrators. Haddathani Abdul Razak, wa haddathani Ma'amar, wa haddathani Zuhri. An Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala, my Ustad Abdul Razak told me, Zuhri told him, this one told him, until Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa told Hazrat Aisha, and Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, came and tell Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a hadith Qudsi. And what was that hadith Qudsi? That inna Allah hastahi an tu'adhib adha shaybatin fil Islam. That Allah ta'ala says, I feel ashamed of punishing a person whose beard has become white while he has remained steadfast upon Islam. So Yahya ibn Aksam said, I told Allah, oh Allah, this is what I have heard about you. So Allah Ta'ala will say, all the people who have narrated the hadith, all have spoken the truth. Go Yahya, I have forgiven you, go into Jannah. Brothers, Allah is waiting for us. It comes in a hadith, Inna Allah yabsutu yadahu bilayl liyatuba musi'un na'ar. Allah Ta'ala stretches his hand of mercy every day to forgive the people who have done wrong in the night. And every night Allah Ta'ala stretches his hand of mercy to forgive the people who have done wrong during the day. Let us not allow this last few days of Ramadan to go by without coming closer towards Almighty Allah. Allah Ta'ala is so ghafoor rahim Allah is so great. It is said about Rabia Basriya rahmatullah alayha when she passed away and the angels came and asked her, Oh Rabia, do you know Allah? Mar Rabbuk. And she said, go and tell Allah. Go and tell Allah. I am one of billions of human beings. I am one of billions of human beings. When Allah did not forgive, forget me, then I had only one object of remembrance. How can I forget Allah? Let us come closer towards Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use these last few days 
in coming closer towards Almighty Allah, having our sins forgiven, keeping in mind, worried about the punishment of Allah, worried about our evil deeds, but yet at the same time, having entitlement to have every right of having hope in the mercy of Allah, hoping that inshallah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will engulf us and make us pure from our sins with the required conditions. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us His forgiveness with the due requisites that we have to adopt. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi